Welcome to a little lab rat fun networking with fish. This is the BGP show and tell series. Uh, this is snippet number five. And in this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, try to ping uh, 40.100.100.40 from R2. Also try to ping the IPv6 address that's over here from R2. There's going to be an issue with that. We're going to resolve that issue. Uh, and then we're going to ping from R2 to both the IPv4 and the IPv6, and from R3 to the IPv4 and the IPv6. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back a layer over to router one, and we're going to uh, ping from there for the IPv4 and IPv6. We're going to have a problem, and then we're gonna go ahead and fix that problem. So let's go ahead and start. So let's go over to R2. Let's do a ping. Let's actually look and make sure that we actually have our, so we have both of our um, neighbors. And so we can do a ping 40.100.100.40. Now, as we can say that that's not actually working. So why isn't it working? Let's go ahead and actually go over to the internet. And I actually have a debug ICMP already on over here. So as we can see, the ICMP echo request is actually making it over. So we are going from R2 to R20, from R20 to the internet, which is Autonomous System 40. And uh, this router is building an ICMP echo reply back. Now it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna go back to 20.2.20.2. And as we can see, there is no 20.2.20.2 in here. Which one is 20.2.20.2? It is this IP address right here. So what's gonna happen is it's not that R2 can't successfully get to this IPv4 address. It is the fact that this IP, uh, that this router cannot get the ICMP echo reply back. It's gonna actually be the same problem if we do a show IP route, um, show IP route six. And so what's gonna happen is if we actually look over here, this is the prefix 2001 dog baker 82 colon 20 and we can see that two colon 20 is actually not in here. We have 20 colon 40, which is between um, router 20 and router 40, where router 40, the internet, this is 30 colon 40. But we do not have this right here. So there's a couple different choices here. Now we can either ping from here and advertise this subnet into the internet. Or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I don't feel like advertising this into the internet. So what I really want is I want to be able to ping from R2's loopback. So I want to be able to ping from R2's loopback to an extended ping to the um, this IPv4 loopback or from this IPv6 address to this IPv6 address. So that's really what I want to do. I want to be able to IPv4, IPv6, um, extended ping between loopbacks for both IPv4 and IPv6 from router 2, from router 3, and from router 1. So what I want to do then is I want to be able to actually advertise the loopbacks. So if we go back over to R2, what I actually have, if you do a show, uh, show run section and we do a prefix list, prefix list, whoops, the daisy, that's not prefix list. So I actually have some prefix lists already in here. So what I have is I have an IPv4 prefix list that um, matches on the loopback addresses. This is router one's loopback address right here. This is router two's, this is router three. And then again, I have the same similar thing for um, IPv6 with the IPv6 loopback addresses. If we do a show run section route map, again, SRS is an alias. Then what we have is we have, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and have a route map that permits the, um, the loopbacks and um, also for IPv6 as well. But then of course, as a route map, statement, route map statement, it has an implicit deny all. These are also actually over already configured in router three as well. So if we go to router three and we do this command, I should already have over here the 
configs. Ah, it's not going to work, is it? Oh, I guess it did. Uh, the configs that I need. So what I'm going to do is we have this route map, and I'm going to go ahead and do a redistribute. So I'm going to come here. So let's do a show run. Um, actually, let's do a show run section OSPF. So my IPv4 process, since I'm running OSPF v2 for IPv4 and OSPF v3 for IPv6, my OSPF process for v6 is actually a 6, and my process for um, IPv4 is a 100. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to come in here, and we're going to do a config t router bgp10. And what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and I want to go into the address family itself because what I want to actually do is I want to actually redistribute uh, OSPF for IPv4 and I want to literally just go ahead and um, redistribute the OSPF and match all of the loopbacks. So I'm going to go ahead and say redistribute OSPF 100 route map allow loopbacks. I'm also going to go ahead and go into the v6 one and the only thing that's actually different here is I'm going to do a redistribute redistribute OSPF and this is actually going to be a six because the process um, the process ID for OSPF v3 is actually a six now we're going to go ahead and do a this one and now let's just actually go ahead and see if we um, come over here. If we do a, you can actually see in here, if we do a show IP route, um, we actually have some BGP routes in here now because if we actually looked up um, earlier, we only had this one for IPv4, we only had the loopback of R20. And now if we go ahead and come down here, internet, which of course is an autonomous system 40, actually has all three of the subnets. These are being learned from router 20. So let's go ahead and do the same thing over on, 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 on 30. So we can do a show run section BGP and we can go ahead and be efficient. So we should now go over to here and actually see that um, it's still 20, but let's do a, a BGP. And so we actually see that we can see router one's loopback from both router 30 and router 20. And it is actually uh, the one with router 20 that is actually getting picked. That's gonna go even further down. Um, so if we actually did this, 10.100.100.1 um, they're both actually external so we're going to go ahead and get even further down but for right now awesome it's there so let's go ahead and go over here and let's do a ping to 40.100.100.40 and we're actually going to do a source from the loopback and there we go ping 2001 colon dog baker 8 colon 40 colon 40 colon colon 40 and then we're going to source that also from the loopback okay whoops loopback zero and we're going to go ahead and this one's a little bit harder to do so we're going to take this we're going to go ahead over here and we're going to ping the ipv6 first and then we're going to ping the ipv4 40.100.100.40 and source that from loopback zero so as we can see, uh, we did fix that. So R2 and R3 can ping from their loopback interfaces and the ICMP echo, as we saw before, did make it to the internet. But now the internet can actually send back because it knows the loopbacks IPv4 and IPv6 for router two and router three. Now let's go ahead and go into router one and let's actually go ahead and uh, do a copy and paste. So we're gonna do a, a ping um, to 2001 dog baker 8 40 40 colon colon 40 and source from the loopback so as you can see r1 does not actually have in it 
um, we cannot actually get there. The question is, are we even trying? So let's go ahead and go over here again. And let's go back to router one and let's do a ping 40, 100, 140, because I have uh, IPv4 um, debugging on. Source with back zero. So if we look, actually, the internet is not getting this ICMP echo. So unlike when router two was sending the ping, we were at least getting the echo. This is not going anywhere. So let's look. So if we do a show IP route, this is the IPv4, we notice that we have no 4100 140 in here. So we have no way to get that. We also have no default route. Same thing is actually happening here as well. So um, R1, because we're doing OSPF with R2 and R3 here, R1 has does not have 2001 dog baker 8 40 colon 40 colon colon 40 in here. Um, and it has no default route. Now that's interesting because you might have actually noticed that I did have a default route in here. So let's go to here and let's do a show run section OSPF, again aliases. And we see that we actually had a default information originate. Now of course for those of you who are familiar with OSPF, <laughs> uh, we're not going to advertise this actually because we actually need this always keyword. And this is really up to you. So what's gonna happen is we're not actually going to send the quad zero or the default route from R2 to R1, um, unless we actually are bringing it in and we already have a quad zero in there. So always goes ahead and shoves it in there. And actually it is the same um, for IPv4 and IPv6. Now, of course, we're over here in process um, six, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Copy paste. And all I'm going to do is come over here and change this to IPv4. <clears throat> Apparently, I'm not going to. Oh, I didn't mean to do router OSPF. Yeah, I did. <coughs> um, there is no address family. I'm so sorry. I actually just have it. I didn't do uh, that. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we go back over into R1, and again, coming back over here, here's the, the internet, and let's go ahead and do that ping again. And we actually are successful. R4 does actually get it. It's going back to 10, 100, 101, which we already have because we're actually redistributing the OSPF and printing loopbacks through to get out to the internet. So let's go ahead and look at that. So what we actually have is we actually have a default route from R2. Um, we also have a default route uh, right here. Uh, this is the default route for IPv6. So we should also be able to do a ping 2001 colon dog baker 8 colon uh, 40 colon 40 colon, whoops, it is colon 40 colon colon 40 and then source loopback 0 and that will work as well. Now, of course, the only issue here is that if we actually lost R2, we don't actually have those same commands over in R3. So we do not have an always over in R3. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because it's much easier. And then can actually up arrow here. So let's go back over to router one. And router one now has two ways, two uh, default routes uh, to get to it. Sorry, it didn't before, but now it does. Uh, one via router two and one via router three. And that's also going to be happening over on the IPv6 again one to router two and one to router three. Now, if you're wondering what these are, these are actually link local addresses. I like to do this. And the reason why I like to do this is if we go over to R2 and we do a, a show IPv6 route, <clears throat> what you'll notice is, is that I'm actually learning some stuff via, um, actually I'm not in this situation. 
So what I did was show run interface gigabit zero one when I actually did the IPv6, and I really like doing this with IPv6. All of my interfaces, um, I actually do a link local address. So why do I have a link local address? The reason why I have a link local address, if you actually notice when I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, again, SON as an alias, I'm actually going to go ahead, oops, wrong one. Um, show IP OSPF neighbor. Show IP <laughs> V6 OSPF. Let's do neighbor. And also let's do interface. So here's a very interesting thing that happens. See how this link local address is Fox E80 and then all of this? This is actually taking it because if you're wondering what this is, this is actually taking it and it is actually a type of um, auto creation of the IP address. But I like to go ahead and actually put in here Fox E80 and for router two, everything, all the link local addresses have that colon colon two in it. Router one would be colon colon one, router three would be colon colon three. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna notice in here so that we can quickly and easily see on R2 on this interface that the local address for the designated router is two, which is router two, and the backup is router three, because we're not actually showing the rest of it here. But anyway, again, we can go ahead and we can ping and everything is fat, dumb, and happy. So BGP show and tell, the snippets, are now pretty much done. What we're gonna go ahead and do after this is we're going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper dive. So we'll call it show and tell deeper, uh, show, BGP show and tell deeper dive. Um, and we're gonna have different series on that. This one's going to be, the next one's going to be, we're gonna put a verf interface on this loopback and then verf on this loopback. And we're actually gonna do MPLS L3 VPN between here and here. And you'll actually notice that we actually already have, you probably already noticed this, that I actually already have um, MPLS on, on the interfaces in the Autonomous System 10 environment. So that's it. Hope you had fun playing in the lab, networking with fish on the BGP show and tell uh, beginner series. Thank you, have a great day.